Thank you for listening to the Nate Jackson Podcasting Network. Here we are. Good to see you. Man, I'm excited to do this one, man. Okay. Um, I feel some kind of way. And, and let me explain. What? That ain't got nothing to do with you. I, just, I know I, it feels I, loady. I, like, oh, I, just, I just sat I just there. Just <laughs> right. Met the old... Tell you why I feel some kind of way, right? Okay. So I do a little research before I start speaking to my guests. And I saw a video uh, in the South okay. with a co-worker. Okay. And they was filming you at the job place. Mm-hmm. And I'm fine with that because we all got to eat. We hustle. However, I could mm-hmm. care less about the grind. Yeah. Um. But I didn't like his tone. I didn't like the way he was like, I told y'all this is where he at now. And he, like, like he didn't fell off to it. He did. I'm like, hold the fuck up. Like, I felt some kind of way. Okay. But I want to know more about that. Like, how do you go from uh, L.A. to the South? How, like, what is th- I wanted to give myself the opportunity to be more than just an actor for a portion of my life because That's I was real. like, man, That's I've been real. doing this since I was like six earlier like, than that. Oh no, huh? man, a ba- I, I did Pampers commercials. What? So, yeah. yeah. So I like Cheerios. Yeah. So wow. like all I've known for a long time was acting. Right. And it's hard to answer that question of if this is something you're actually enjoying if or if this done. is just something you've only done. Right. So I was like, man, I got myself in a place in my life where I can take some risks and I can go and, and be a whole bunch of different people and experience different professions right. and like really grow from it. It probably like, even helps the acting. Like, like now nah, I've done it. I mean, really, right. like you can't talk to nobody unless you're able to deal with like an angry customer and they <laughs> like phone bill. <laughs> right. Like, you can't really talk to nobody yet. Like if you can't keep your cool in that situation, man, you're gonna mess up on the, at the Oscars or something. You know. That's real. So, so. Okay, so we'll call it an epistemology project, right? Where you go out and you say, I'm going to get into the trenches with the people. Word mm-hmm. of the day, epistemology. Mm-hmm. I yeah. like that one. I like that one. <laughs> Which is essentially where you take your experience from your discourse mm-hmm. and you step into another one just to see how the hell they do that. As if a comic or an actor doing uh, the work of their project, if they had to be yeah. a black cowboy. Mm-hmm. So you go spend two months in Wyoming yeah. so that you really... You know, you learn how essence. to connect with so many different types of people, man. Right. And you can't do that in one part of the world. So Mm-mm. you kind of got to, um, you know, go to a different part of the country. Go work a different job. Like, I didn't, I didn't work construction. Really? I didn't work behind, the, um, behind like, at a, um, a restaurant. Really? I worked, oh, yeah. And, okay. I had a, and I picked up so many skills, huh. like, doing them. Learned about those types of people, you know, the jokes they laugh at, huh. you know, what they talk about on their breaks, because everybody's different, man. Right. And that type of experience you can't buy. So, so was it, now I get that it's, it's, you know, it's a delve into, you know, different roles of society and to see how they get down, but was some of it, like in every movie, there's a character that, say they get dared to fall in love with a girl or they get dared or whatever. And then at some point in the movie, they really do fall for that person. Then the person finds out like, well, what part of this was real? Like, was there some of that that was real? Like, was there some you really connected to? Was there some that you really were like, you know what, the construction shit, I could have, maybe I could have been a thing. Like for me, man, I get a great thrill out of like working hard and doing a good job okay. at whatever I'm at. Whatever and it is. Yeah, like. I don't care if I'm flipping burgers. Okay, I'm gonna be the best damn burger flipper. Okay, y'all Dr. Seen. King, you talk yeah. on them. You sweep God. that street, brother. God. So it's, it's kind of cool, man. It, it develops grit and character, it and does. I think like a lot of young dudes, like my age, they don't have to like they don't put themselves in situations to fail enough to develop huh. grit or character. That's real. But you have to go to that point where it's like. You know, you get burned as a welder, you know, in construction, or you have to climb to the top of the, you know, the scaffold, and it's some scary shit initially, but you have to do it. You right. have to go past that, and that's, that's Same cool, Same thing as man. a screen test or whatever. It translates in every format, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm a big brother, man. I got, I got four little brothers. Really? And so it was really great opportunity for me to be able to be really active mm-hmm. in their lives right. at that moment in their lives because mm-hmm. they're all teenagers and to really set them on a good path required that me be you know there man you got to have somebody to put the knuckle in you you know like right and tell you hey this give you a little noogie this is what you're gonna get straight stay straight real. man yeah but they're all good kids man they're all college should, 
Dog, knuckle, college, like a noogie, is when you put the knuckle in, is it's old on school. It's yeah. old school. It's but some terrible. of these people, they minds. You like, you put his knuckle in his brother? Like, no, no hold on, God <laughs> damn it. No, no, no. Metaphorically speaking, he's keeping yeah. them in line. Yeah. Okay, it's uplift and guidance mm-hmm. and structure. Yeah. 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 So, okay, well, you go down south. You mm-hmm. you have these experiences. Mm-hmm. You come back to L.A. Yeah. To you know, get back to that hustle, mm-hmm. and you come back with new with new jewelry. Yeah, with new drive, man. I mean, no, 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 no. Oh, my wife. Yeah, oh, yeah. you oh, come yeah. back with new oh, yeah. with new jewelry, bro. Uh-huh. Oh, so yeah. how does so what happened? You go out there, you experiencing all of that stuff, and you're like, hey, love is out here too now. Man, honestly, we met um, we met out here. Me and really, man, me and my wife, we dated for like five years before we got married. Where, okay, where'd you meet your wife? Um, actually, at a house party over there in Whittier, man. My Get the fuck my out buddies here. had my buddies. Um, they were like, hey, we got a party we're going to tonight. You want to come? I said, okay. That one fell through. Okay. We ended up calling some of their friends, like, hey, what are you guys doing tonight? They're like, oh, we're going to another spot. We ended up meeting up there, and we hit it off immediately. Never never not talked since that day, man. Yo, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Because they tell you, like, you know, you ain't going to find your wife in the club and in the parties and things like that. But here you are. Uh, were you a hopeless romantic before this? Nah, man. Honestly, I wasn't. I didn't expect I was going out and do final love that day. Um, I mean, that was almost unfortunate. Uh-huh. <laughs> God damn it. I was out here looking yeah. for some work. <laughs> nah, I'm in love. Nah, man. <laughs> Hilarious. I, I remember that it was about two days afterwards. Um, I was texting her on the phone, and my cousin, was one of my best friends, he walked past me, and he saw me texting on the phone. He said, who are you texting? I saw that girl from the other night. He goes, oh, man, you're falling in love with her. I go shut up. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Don't you say that no, word on me. Don't say that. Don't, don't you. Don't, don't you put that, that on me. Don't you wish that evil palm me, Ricky Bobby. You touch, huh? <laughs> but man, six years later, man. Good God, it's, it's six cool, years later. Heck yeah. That's what's up. So I saw in a, and I'm shifting here, yeah. just so you know. I okay. saw in an interview where you, where somebody asked you uh, your interactions with uh, Bernie, mm-hmm. and if you don't mind, of course. I mean, tell me, because I, I'm a comedian, yeah. and I've been doing this shit for 15 years. But out of all of the kings, out of all of the great comics, out of everybody working, Bernie's who I did not meet. Mm. Bernie's who I have met through other wow. people. So your stories actually, I feel yeah. like... Kind of well, like filling Yeah, and I, I'm in that. green rooms, and he signed the wall. Yeah. or You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm literally, I feel like I'm in his way. Yeah, like in his, like his boat has gone by, and the, and I'm riding the waves that he has yeah. patterned for me, and so yeah. you worked every day. Yeah, yeah. To see um, just the effectiveness of his funny man, like in person, was inspiring to me. Like, what do you mean? Um, Bernie woke up funny, and it's like a weird thing. Like <laughs> a lot of people, no, like a lot of people need to get into a special headspace right. to be funny. Right. Bernie didn't have that other headspace where he wasn't funny. He woke up and the the way he phrased um, what he had to say and communicated right. was just infectious. Everywhere he'd go, people would be hanging on to every word. Hmm. And just to like really watch that as a young man and a young man who wants to do something like that one day was really awe-inspiring, man. And it gave me a lot of... Um, I mean, it's one of those things where that's, all right, that's what I'm striving to be now. And that's... You know, that keeps working hard. So, he had an innate funny? Man, the dude just had great, great timing. And he he had a great knack for um, reading people and not, you know, he wouldn't go too far where he would offend people. Okay. You know, a lot of comics want to, you know... Bust people down. Right. Bernie could make you laugh and bust you up. You right, know I mean? right. He could, he could make you laugh about how great you looked that day. I'm uh, like, all right, cool, man. It, it's nice to. He just had a great energy to him, man. And it's hard to it's hard to describe to people. Yeah. Okay, so is there, in your opinion, with your level of contact and interaction with Bernie, mm-hmm. is there, is there a, a part of him or an essence of him that you feel like the general people? missed or they didn't get that you maybe want to well i think that um him doing a show in which he was the kind of head of this family was a a great medium for him to show that he was a really good family guy man Mm -hmm. like everybody on our cast and our crew um 
individually felt like Bernie cared about you. You know, wow. Bernie, Bernie knew your name. Right. Bernie, well, you know, like, yeah. I, I mean, we had a lot That's of people. That's big because you do a lot of sets. No, I mean, yeah. And you're like, what's the dude with the uh, the blue check? We, we you kept, don't know no one's name. From the from the beginning pilot to the end season, we kept ninety percent of the same really of crew. That's rare too. That's because as big. soon as you get greenlit, yeah. everybody be like, all right, all new people, man. Yeah, exactly. I mean, every year people would clear their schedules and be like, nah, I'm coming back to Bernie Mac show. Wow, it was such a cool environment. That's man. incredible. So, I think that that's that's hard to get to people because he seems really tough. Right. And hard. Nah, Bernie was just disciplined. He grew up in a different time where he had to develop that grit. Bernie, you know, I always, when I would be working. Tell that story. When I would be working in regular jobs, uh-huh. I would always be thinking about how, at my age, Bernie was still doing, like, he was Bernie still driving trash trucks. That's true, because Bernie didn't it's, get on until, what, 55, 50? Yeah. No, uh, well, oh. no, go ahead. Okay, well, uh, he was actually working. Come right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, come on, Khalid. <laughs> I didn't really leave, guys. Um, he, <laughs> no, no, you start right there. Okay. Actually, um, what he did do was he uh, worked all the way up until 35. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's kind of when he started getting on about comedy. Mm-hmm. He was doing the L train. He mm-hmm. was uh, smoking cool cigarettes. Uh, he was very, to what you were saying, was that he lived a life that allowed him to develop character. Yeah. Which I think was very smart of you and bold of you. Because what it does do when you are a child that only is behind the camera, uh-huh. you never really get to touch and feel what it means to be real. Mm-hmm. And that's what you've yep. done. And that's why mm-hmm. I give you kudos for that. I right appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> she break in and break out. I love it. So, yeah, I'm, I, I, I hope it didn't come off like I'm knocking any of the nah, stuff that man. you didn't gain experience. I think that that's dope. First of all, I'll put it furthermore. If... If acting was to dry up some and you were like, let me just do this normal shit because this is, I got bills to pay, mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Even though this mm-hmm. wasn't that, I, yeah. it could have been. I don't care. I saw Elton from the uh, Cosby shows working at, you saw that story? Mm-hmm. I yeah. don't knock that. Life gives us peaks and life gives us valleys yeah. and yep. you can't appreciate the peaks if you don't have your valleys. Mm-hmm. We work, but who just been on and is always on and don't have it? No. The fact of the matter is, very talented and uh, dedicated to the craft and what you put your mind to do is going to happen. So when you say you got, you, y'all you going to do a production company and y'all going to oh, yeah. turn the page and, and move on and get back, you know, do, create the thing that's uh, on the precipice of uh, developing culture, mm-hmm. I got no reason to doubt you. No. Nah, you nah. know what I'm saying? No. I mean, we're going to keep on trying until we win. So, I mean, we're not no losers here. That's real. I mean, no, just keep on going. Like, you're going to hit that wall where it's like, all right, is this working? Is this working? Is this working? It's going to work because I'm going to keep at it, man. I'm I'm young. I've learned I can take a break away from it and come now, back. How, and, how and old are you? Now. I'm 28 now, man. You are young. Yeah. 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 Young as hell. Yeah. So when you, you went out into the world or whatever, start developing mm-hmm. favorites and step away from, like, what did you go, what was your favorite activity that had nothing to do with the industry what was your favorite what did you go out and for your first I, this is how i feel it feels it almost feels like a, a, a majestic lion that was raised in captivity and then let to go out into the wild for the first <laughs> time yeah. i want to know mm-hmm. what that lion did yeah. down there what did you do what did you man. Be like man i like gumbo like what did, yeah. <laughs> what happened I, i've learned i really like scuba diving i really like dirt what? bike riding I, i'm like a really big adventurer you man. was just with white people I, no i do a whole bunch of stuff man it's like niggas that scuba dive me and my dad have been scuba diving since i was like 13 years old wow man. so you know like scuba as, diving. as young as i could be to get under the water i've been under the water bro so, I, okay i got I, I, okay <laughs> <laughs> i did a gig in um in Seychelles, which mm-hmm. is like an Eastern African mm-hmm. island, uh, n- n- kind of by Madagascar. Uh, and it was a very interesting gig. But part of it was that we got to do uh, excursions. Okay. And we went scuba diving. Nice. But I snorkeled. Oh. Okay. Now, you can say oh, all you want, but uh, I don't know where you diving at. But 600 miles off the coast of Madagascar is the mating area for great white sharks. Mm-hmm. And I am big and black, and I look like a seal. Mm-hmm. In my mind, mm-hmm. I didn't want them problems. Speaking of, speaking of great whites, man. Get out of here. 
I was actually on a um, come right, come sh- right here. It was this is a, about to get stupid. I already it, know. It was a because uh, anytime a nigga started sentence off, <laughs> yeah. with, speaking, speaking of, of great whites, white, like that's yeah, not, okay. <laughs> what happened, bro? Um, we were actually doing a dive off of the Channel Islands. It's like a, it's about ninety feet down, and there's a shipwreck at the bottom. Well, where are the Channel Islands? Um, Channel Islands are right off the coast of like what is that, Santa Barbara, I believe. Here, California. Yeah, okay. California. Okay. Um, so we went down. We were down there maybe about thirty-five minutes. Um, and how, how how much uh, air did you have? Air at that point, we have maybe about twenty-five minutes left. left. Yeah, left. Okay. Um, so we're all hanging out there. Hold on, let me turn this on. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, I don't I don't mind that happening because this is phenomenal. So That's you're it. underwater for yeah. thirty five minutes with twenty five minutes of time left. Uh huh. You're, you're, you're how how far down are you? We're about ninety feet and um, nine stories. Yeah, about just nine to give you stories. a reference, one story of a building is ten feet. Mm-hmm. So he's nine stories underwater. And we, um, our instructor, he said, "Stop." Stop. He said, "Look up." And we look up, and about 60 feet up above us, man, mm-hmm. we see this thing as, po- I mean... So it was only 30 feet deep in the water, really. Yeah. So you look up at the bottom. Mm-hmm. So he's about, probably about 18 feet long. He's God huge. damn. Huge. Huge. 18 feet? 18 feet long, homie. A great white. And we're all just like... Oh my God! Now he would have heard about him. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. My air would have said two, right? <laughs> Hell of bubbles, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Check you look the, up at the, no, the, the, the balls of a. <laughs> do they have balls, nigga? No, they don't have no balls. <laughs> they got the little meat inside. Yeah, okay, bro. okay. So you look up at a great white shark belly. Yeah. And what do you do? Are you like, nigga, be well, quiet? Well, think about this. At 90 feet, anything past, I think it's about 80 feet, when you go up, you Too need fast. to have a safety stop. Yeah. So safety stop usually is at about 18 to 25 feet. Right in front of it. And it has to be for three minutes. So we're like, oh. Hell no. We're about to chill right here. Yeah. What we did, because we were like, we're going to give that shark as much time to get out of this area instead of going exploring the rest of the of the boat right we're like let's all just post up and conserve our air so that we can chill. instead of making that 25 minute air right we made it 35 40 minute by, air by so they little breaths give him <laughs> give him some time to leave i'd have been in there breathing like the like the bad guy in harlem nights at the end yeah. of the movie when they put him in the safe <laughs> So how how long do you wait? Because from what I understand, sharks have uh, there's like a line on the side of their body where they can sense their entire yeah, like surrounding. Yeah, electro- electromagnetic. So he knew uh-huh. he was under it. He probably did. Oh, for sure. I mean, he knew it was you. He was like, I watched the show. <laughs> <laughs> he kept going. So you wait uh-huh. 10, 10 minutes, twenty minutes, about twenty minutes extra. Well, you don't see him no more. Yeah. I mean, okay. So tell me, how's the visibility? There? I mean, visibility can, in California. Can you see far? Not particularly. So, so, so essentially, he could have been ten feet outside he, of what you could, could have, see. Yeah, he could have been thirty feet away, basically. Yeah, but that makes hey, my heart no, race. I'm greatest, sorry. No, Not a, knowing, like, nigga, I just start fucking with the dark. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you telling me you wait twenty minutes for? Yeah. And you can, are you guys talking to each other? It's all hand no, signals. No, it's all just hand signals. I mean, Hell no! So y'all can't even. Uh, no. uh, 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 I'm scared, Daddy. It's, no. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you're uh-huh. just out there like, okay, when, I, when y'all move, I'm going to move. I like a good adventure, man. A good adventure brings out that same level of, like, joy for me as, like, being on stage and, like... Yeah, but, like, during it, you're feeling the rush? Or it's, like, like when you when you finally get out of the water and the fuck back away from the edge of the boat, go, is that ah! when you're like, whoa, is that when? Yes, that's exactly when, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're like, we got to clean out my scuba suit. You got to stay because cool and you got to make sure you don't die. It's full of doo-doo, baby. nigga. I... Fill that shit up. Yeah. Wow. No, that's fun. that's fun. No, just a visual to me. It'd be like you're you're ninety yeah. feet underwater. You yeah. look up and there's a shark. Yeah. It swims out of view and you're cooling for twenty minutes. Like we'll just assume it kept yeah. going that way because in reality he could have been like, hey, what's happening? Like he, he could have been like, hey, can yeah. I? Yeah. Right. You had no cage. <laughs> Did you have uh, any, was there weapons? Did you have any? No, y'all have no weapons. What the fuck were y'all doing down there, man? <laughs> yeah. Exploring, man. Looking for a boat? 
we were exploring this shipwreck, man. Man, they got ships of- on land, dog. You didn't have to do that, <laughs> man. <laughs> Shit. Nah, man. I just like I like seeing things that very few people have seen. Well, nigga, that because, counts. Mm-hmm. So, 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 there's that one. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that's like that where you're like? I've been cooking a lot, man. Honestly, because my all right, look. What? So my mom, my mom's a Le Cordon Bleu trained chef. Really? Yeah. And so I grew like growing up, she did um, a whole bunch of catering. And so I grew up like cooking. And yeah. now that I'm like on my own, my own house, uh-huh. like I got a wife now, yeah. I can cook and do so all kinds. So you're going down. Oh man. What's what's yeah. your go to? Oh man. What's your go to? Oh, lately. What, like, like how about that? Somebody you're like you about to have some people over. Okay. And you're like I cook, and they're like, nigga, you don't cook. You're like. Just come over. Okay. What do you, what's your go-to? I make some black beans. And Kalita can attest, my black beans are bomb. That seems so uh, simple. Black beans and cilantro lime rice. We'll do some chicken yes, with yeah. it. <laughs> no, nah, man. <laughs> she just ran 20 feet nah. to say yes, nigga. And then, ah. I nah, love it. Nah, so, I mean, so are you? Are you? You don't eat meat, then? Oh, I eat everything, man. Everything. Okay. Steaks okay. and salmon and everything. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> You see, you throwing out stuff yeah. <laughs> like it's right. not right. You thought, yeah, he, the right. shark was the one scared of him. Man, let me get the fuck out of here. It's niggas down there. Like, yeah. <laughs> he should have been scared of y'all. You eat snakes? No, not snakes. Did you say snakes and salmon? <laughs> Steak. Oh, no. that's why I was like, nigga, what? <laughs> you have to put it in perspective for me. You were just oh, 90 shit. feet underwater looking at the bottom of a shark. So for you to say you eat a snake, really? Ain't. That's ain't the that next far. show on National Geographic. It ain't that far off. Have you, what's the, what's the wildest experience that you've gone for, this daredevil type shit on land, though? Ooh, on land. I love, um, I love riding dirt bikes, so I just recently um, got back from, like, the dunes in Pismo. Really? Yeah, that was fun, man. Riding, like, on huge dunes, man, and basically your motorcycle or your quad, whatever you're riding, it's almost like, um... It's almost just kind of on the wall. Wow, but you're up. moving, so it's... Oh, yeah. It's so much fun, man. So I've been gotten into doing that. And um, have you done anything in the air? Ooh, nothing in the air yet. That's your next. Like, yeah, a lot of people have been telling me about like going uh, um, skydiving. skydiving, and I'd love to do it. Like, I think that would be one of those cool things. Uh-huh. Like, if you were, uh, like, that'd be a cool side gig to have. Like, sk- parachute instructor. Right. Because all you have to do is, if you can pack your chute, go up. Like, hey, we're jumping. Get paid. I need somebody to watch me pack my shit. Make sure my <laughs> shit first, is right. At least the Let's first pack two the times. second at least the first and two third times. parachute correctly. I don't know. After shit. I, after I had done it once correctly, I'd be have, nervous uh, about other people doing it. They got plus size. Um, <laughs> 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 they got plus size parachutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they could probably parachute a tank at this point, man. Uh, so tell me, tell me this, right? So hmm. in my, from what I understand. Yeah. Um, when you when you're developing, you're you're a young person, and you're mm-hmm. developing, and part of who you are every day is playing this character. You mm-hmm. become that person. Mm-hmm. It just is part of the training and the process. Okay. And that is so opposite to this daredevil spirit that you're sharing right now. Uh, like, just talk about that. Like, how, how did you separate the two? I mean, as a creative man, I think we have tons of different characters inside of us. Mm. I think that's a necessity for this job right like as an actor you need to have that comedy guy you need to have that action guy you need to have that grimy guy right all packed into here mm-hmm. so that you can pull little bits from each person to right, right. develop a whole character right you know like i mean one person i got i mean as a like i'm I right that, that, that's stanislavski right there <laughs> that's stanislavski that's that's not my no, I just heard. I heard Stanis Lop. So so you go through life and you you remember the characters. You mm-hmm. remember who you meet, you remember mm-hmm. who you interact with, mm-hmm. and then you assemble. Yeah, just little bits of, of each person. Like I met um one dude working construction. He was from Arkansas and he had a phrase for everything. So really? when I Yeah, it was like it was like awesome, like <laughs> and so now with like if a character requires that type uh-huh. of energy. You have I'll be it. put I have it, yeah. I've so, I've met that guy. So tell me this, in regards to um I guess chops. Mm-hmm. Uh, your class, your comeuppance, right? Yeah. Like in comedy, I know who's in my class. I know who yeah. my direct comrades are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so yours, among other people, Joaquin Phoenix. Definitely, definitely. Y'all were tight. Are tight. How- yeah. I mean, that's like getting to work on a Disney project. That's like instantly like family. Like because right, right, that's right, right. something like your grandkids are gonna see. Like I can call them one day and be like. Have your grandkids watch Brand- Brother Bear yet? And he's right. gonna be like, yes, of course. Like that's something that's forever. It's in the Disney vault. Forever. So legacy. Yeah, exactly. 
And being able to associate your own legacy with so many before you, so many greats around you, man, right. is the best thing in the world. That's fantastic. So yeah. do you do you have anything in mind? No. So a lot of people, um, I've seen people step away mm -hmm. and come back. I've mm -hmm. seen people step away and just be gone. Yeah. You've stepped away, you've come back. Mm -hmm. In the time that you were gone, stepped mm -hmm. away and doing that stuff, gave you room and space and vacancy in your mind to say, when I go back, what I would like to do is. Yes. Is yes. there a role? Is there a, a thing that you are eyeballing? Is there like the story of an opus? May I have you? Um, what I first want to do is just introduce people to the adult me. I think that's really important. Because, okay. I mean, in order for them to know I'm acting, they need to see who I am initially. That's true. And I think the adult me has grown into somebody who's fun, who's clever, right. who's got a whole bunch of, like, great stories and experiences to tell. And you got swag. Heck, yeah. <laughs> so, Heck yeah, I got you swag. Know, first, no, so first I want to be, I want to be um, somebody who can people can relate to and it's fun and it's, and it's smart. Okay. First, I right. mean, so that's a tall order for a young black man to find a role that can show all of that. Right. You know, that facet of me initially. Right. So after I do that, then I'm going to start thinking about what's the next crazy, you know, offshoot of that. Maybe I'll play like a lunatic with like some you know, twisty dreads. <laughs> okay. You know, but yeah. that's after. Yeah, that's dope. Well, uh, I am rooting for you, for your I success. It. I want to oh, see, yeah. I want to see what, whatever you want. For, not only that. I'd like to work with you. Hey, and we that, will. That'd be a thing. So I had an idea, and it might sound ridiculous. No, shoot. My idea was that uh, there was two long-lost children or one long-lost child that came at that mm -hmm. that came and met the family, that met with everybody from the uh, Bernie Mac show. Now, I don't know what all is even allowed. Yeah. Because, you know, people have licensing and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But, like, I wrote a script for Harlem Nights, too, yeah. which is now called Black Vegas because I didn't want to yeah. deal with exactly. the licensing and exactly. all of that shit. But there's a way. You know yes. what I mean? And so yes. it's just it's just a thought. But, like, I commend you guys for um, the camaraderie, staying together, staying tight. And when I say you guys, I'm talking about everybody from the show. The three yeah. children, Kalita, like, yeah, everyone's tight. Mm -hmm. And... It's dope. What is your experience in that regard? Are you, are you, uh, the way it looks to me is it just looks like there's so much love. Like, and yeah. is that, I mean, that's how, it, that's how it should be. I think we had the, um, special privilege of being young enough to not know anything different. Mm. Like when we started it, I think a lot of adult actors, they'll go into it, not even thinking that becoming actual family with these people is possible because right. it's just like every other job that they've already done. Mm -hmm. um, we were all so young and that, you know, just being introduced to some new aunts and uncles and, and having, yeah, it, yeah, it becomes real. And working together for six years, I mean, it becomes real. That's outstanding. Yeah. Well, you're real. I appreciate it. I try, I try you, You're a real one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I want you to tell them where they can find you, what you what you would like for them to know okay. for you next. Okay. And, um, yeah. Well, yeah, we're currently in the process, and why we, I say, um, all the cast, uh, remaining cast of Bernie Mac show, mm -hmm. we're currently putting together a production company to, okay. to like, fill up people's minds with a whole bunch of cool um, projects and Wonderful. entertainment that they can watch. Mm. Um, people can find me on Instagram. I'm on Real Jeremy Suarez um, on Instagram. Twitter, I'm pretty sure I'm on there. Don't okay. use it much, but hey. Yeah, I don't uh, use Twitter that much nah. either. People think I'm tripping. They're like, Twitter, Twitter's the wave. I'm like, yeah, it's a wave it that passed me, brother. It just pings my phone too much, man. I'm just like, Too hey, many notifications. And then you go on there and see what the notification You're like, this is yeah, like, like, the same shit as I'm before. Like, hey, I think I'm using it cool. wrong. I just don't, really I don't think need I'm, to I don't know, think like... I'm Twittering right. I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so that's the gram. Are you on yeah. Facebook as well? Yes, I am on Facebook. Okay. Uh, Jeremy Suarez on there. Okay. I got my names real early. And it's luckily I got that Suarez last name. You yeah, got Simon it. So what, what is that? Suarez. That's Cuban. Okay. Cuban. All right. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It could have been Dominican or some shit. Yeah. I don't know my, I don't know all my descent last and <laughs> related last names. So the you Cubano. Bean. Yeah. The, uh, half, half black, half Cuban. That's wonderful. Um, yeah. The black bean should have been your hint. Nah, it was, <laughs> the cilantro might have put me over, but I didn't know. So, yeah, make sure you follow him, check him out. Yes. Do you have a website as well? No, no website yet. Find me on the gram. Find me on Facebook. Outstanding. Yep. Thank y'all very much. Thank you for listening to the Nate Jackson Podcasting Network.